So I was talking with esoteric entity, and the topic went to how often the church's statism and their mouthpieces in the dinosaur media evoke the term democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Apparently things are a threat to our democracy. Also, the destruction of entire populations and societies is justified in the name of bringing democracy to those regions. He pointed out that they're actually telling the truth if you replace democracy with government power. This, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. What they mean to say is that this is extremely dangerous to the state. I think Esso's onto something here. With this in mind, this article from The Telegraph suddenly looks completely different. Oh hi, I'm the heretic, and as it says on the title, the UK government wants to ban the term fake news, or well, more specifically, they want to ban the use of the term on official government documentation. The government has banned the term fake news after urging ministers to use misinformation or disinformation instead. The phrase is a favorite of U.S. President Donald Trump. Bad. bad. Orange, Orange man bad. bad. Orange man bad. Orange, Orange, man, bad. Orange man bad. Orange man bad. Will no longer appear in policy documents or official papers because it is a poorly defined and misleading term that conflates a variety of false information from genuine error through to foreign interference with the democratic process, officials said. Foreign interference in democratic processes, huh? You mean Russia, don't you? Don't you? Yet all Russia is accused of doing in terms of meddling in democratic processes is revealed the extent to which Hillary Clinton was breaking U.S. law. My grandparents used to call that journalism. The ban on the phrase was prompted by an inquiry into fake news led by Digital, Culture, Media, and Sports Committee to address the potential for social media to be misused to sway elections. It followed concerns that Russia meddled in the 2016 U.S. presidential election and the U.K. referendum to leave the EU. We know they're being dishonest because they aren't talking about the money the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman gave to the Hillary Clinton campaign, roughly 20% of its funding as of June 2016. Nothing about how that was foreign interference into an election. You know the Saudis, right? That family of blood-soaked psychopaths who are slaughtering Yemenis people by the hundreds? That same royal family whose sordid history is only just now being talked about because they brutally murdered a Washington Post journalist? If you want to talk about foreign interference in elections, what about the 81 elections the U.S. has interfered in between 1946 and 2000, according to the U.S. government's own sources that don't even include coups? Don't even get me started on the neo-Nazi government the U.S. helped install in Ukraine in 2014. But no, it's only bad when it doesn't give Western governments, such as the UK government, the result they want. They don't mean interference in the democratic process in the sense that it alters the results of an election or prevents people from voting or even making educated votes. When they say interfering with democratic processes, what they mean is interfering with the state's interests. Hillary Clinton being president was in the interest of the state. The United Kingdom remaining in the EU was in the interest of the state, and they're unintentionally informing us what they want, and people learning the truth is not in the interest of the state. After completing the probe in July, the DCMS committee released an interim report that warned of a democratic crisis founded upon the manipulation of personal data which targeted users with pernicious views, particularly during elections and referenda. The government wants a monopoly on information. They run government schools. They effectively run universities. They control mainstream media. Hell, in the U.S., the mainstream media is literally the propaganda wing of the CIA. They subsidize social media giants and protect them through legislation. What they mean to say is that your ability to break the conditioning, to be connected to your fellow people, to discuss ideas, and escape the government's attempt at grabbing a monopoly on information is a threat to their power. Do you honestly think that it's in the government's interests that you be an informed, educated individual? Of course not. If you were, you'd realize you don't need these bastards. According to them, people being informed about facts they don't like is pernicious. How dare you be exposed to opinions we don't like. The government rejected proposals for a new tax on Facebook and Twitter that could be used to fund education in schools. 
It vetoed a change in the rules covering political spending online so that limits are put on the amount of money an individual can donate. Oh no. God forbid people be educated in places outside of government schools or do whatever they want with their money. We need government, 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 democracy, government, government, democracy, government, 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 democracy, 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 government, democracy, government, democracy, democracy. Fake news was originally developed by the Hillary Clinton 2016 presidential campaign for use against Trump voters who used alt media sources as news sources. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year, it's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This became particularly prominent during the Pizzagate affair, where it was alleged that a Washington, D.C. pizzeria was being used as a front for child sex trafficking. Anyways, the term fake news was picked up by The Donald and 4chan, who turned it against Clinton in the mainstream media, even popularizing it enough that Trump himself criticized the mainstream media using those terms. Fake you are fake news. So what does it tell you that a major Western government is going out of their way to avoid using a meme in official documentation? We're winning. They're terrified of our ability to network, to meme, and it's far too late for them to do anything about it. They can't put the internet genie back in the bottle no matter how hard they agitate for it, or whatever scheme they concoct to trick people into advocating for government control of the internet. Here's what's happening. You're learning that people who call themselves a government don't have the moral right to steal from you just because they gave themselves the power after they wrote it down on a piece of paper. You're learning that this robbery and their restrictions imposed on you without your consent is slavery by another name. Your ability to learn the truth without asking permission is a threat to their power and they're scared, as they should be. Because within our lifetimes, hatchlings will grow up having never had government control over their lives for the first time in 5,500 years. And I, for one, can't wait. Questions? Comments? Critique? What other words do you want to see the Church of Statism ban in its official documentation? How long until the UK government starts arresting people for saying fake news? Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.